For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. In the immediate coming months, considering the nature of the sanctions that are being imposed and considering, say, the shortage that may take part, take place as far as supplies are considered concerned, what is Huawei's strategy look like specifically and China's in a general sense in the short to maybe even medium term? Yeah, that's, that's a good question and one that I think is difficult to uh, answer with any degree of certainty, Absolutely. given how, uh, you know, how many moving parts there are, uh, how, how contingent in many ways the development uh, mm -hmm. of, you know, the trade war and the tech war is on, on uh, you know, political circumstances indeed within, within the next couple of months that are hard to foresee now. Um, you already had the somewhat surprise, surprising development, I think, at the end of July, or sorry, the end of June, um, of, of Trump, again, unilaterally, as, as he does with these things, uh, sort of loosening a lot of the uh, very, very stringent restrictions on, you know, uh, U.S. or, 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 or of, of, on sales by U.S. firms to Huawei of key components, like for example, you know, um, microchips, right? Mm -hmm. Where uh, China's own productive capacity does indeed lag by about five to 10 years, um, what would be required uh, to, to actually domestically produce, um, you know, uh, sort of cutting edge chips that, you know, are, are uh, competitive in material terms with um, what's produced in the US and, uh, <clears throat> you know, that, that really more than anything else, I think, was uh, the move by the United States that, you know, would have and still very well could um, be intended to completely kneecap uh, Huawei's global market position. Um, and so, you know, like, like that, that part of it is sort of up in the air at the moment. Um, there's really not much, I think, in the immediate term that uh, China can necessarily do unilaterally to, to rectify that simply because of, you know, the present state of, of, of U.S. monopoly in that department. Um, and, you know, that's, that's not the only sort of uh, uh, front or, 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 or uh, angle in, in the U.S. assault on Huawei though, right? The other is, is sort of taking advantage of the platform monopolies that are, uh, you know, headquartered in the U.S. Uh, basically in order to mount another assault on, on Huawei's market position, you know, which is, which is essentially, you know, by putting Huawei on uh, the entities list with which Google, for example, uh, you know, is, 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 is unable to, to do business substantially. Uh, it means that, for example, you know, Gmail, uh, the entire sort of Google Play Store and so on uh, are not available and they're not interoperable with Huawei phones, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think this is really laying bare uh, the extent to which these platform monopolies, you know, exactly. uh, Google, Apple, um, the various platforms that they own, right? Um, Microsoft now, which we're seeing with TikTok. Uh, they are arms of the U.S. imperial projects, and when it comes down to it, um, you know this vision of uh, of an open internet is 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 just a mirage, right? Um, like like the, the the extent of their of their of their penetration and their monopoly presence at a global level, um, you know, are to to borrow a phrase from Mike Pompeo, tentacles of U.S. influence that are still quite quite powerful, and so. Um, yeah, in, in the sort of uh, immediate term, uh, what Huawei does have to fall back on for certain is still the Chinese domestic market, right? Um, I believe its own supply of, of microchips uh, can still last for about six to nine months, maybe, uh, should, should those export re restrictions be reimposed as they might at any moment. Um, it, it's not without reason that uh, the, the, the CEO of Huawei, as, as well as, in fact, Xi Jinping himself, uh, you know, referring to sort of the, the, the broader um, <clears throat> situation that China faces now, 
is analogizing the coming months and years to a new long march because <clears throat> uh, you know we are entering into a phase of of actual sort of economic siege in some ways at least at the at the commanding heights of of um, you know the uh, the of, of global sort of technological infrastructure and uh, you know in, in in terms of uh, sort of building out its own uh, domestic uh, technological stack right China is, is, is pursuing this strategy quite deliberately but again that is a process that has to take place over over you know ultimately five to ten years exactly. um, and in immediate terms uh, you know there, there there will be sort of real losses and retrenchments that um, that will be necessary but right. um, I think that you know uh, Chinese leadership has a clear-eyed view of, of the situation um, and uh, it understands as well that, you know, because uh, all this is taking place in, in a sort of broader geopolitical context uh, where, where uh, U.S. hegemony is fraying at least, it's not, it's not necessarily under immediate existential threat, but certainly with the broader COVID-19 pandemic, with, mm -hmm. you know, uh, sort of self-inflicted injuries in many ways, that right. that Trump in particular has uh, has has uh, caused right uh, to the smooth functioning of the U.S. imperial apparatus uh, that China can pursue as well this this broader structure uh, this broader strategy of of deepening a counter hegemonic bloc through, for example, the Belt and Road Initiative, um, which will at the very least uh, you know create a fairly reliable uh, common market in some ways um, among among global South countries uh, that that will allow to sort of weather the storm. Absolutely. And uh, to come back to the issue we're talking about in terms of the strategy which has to be pursued over the mm -hmm. next five to ten years. So, what would you see as some of the key pillars? You also again written about the Made in China 2025 initiative is one of the key components. So, could you maybe talk a bit about that as well as? What would be some of the pillars of the strategy over the next five to ten years? Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, to get maybe a little bit more into the weeds of Made in China 2025, um, this essentially was uh, a plan first laid out in 2015 um, for for China, you know, as stated before, to uh, move up the value chain to sort of uh, escape. Uh, you know what is referred to conventionally as the middle income trap, right? Mm -hmm. um, which very much is, is an epiphenomenon of of world imperialism, where uh, countries that start out in the formerly colonized or semi colonized periphery stay there, right? Um, because of a very intentional strategy through 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 trade policy, right, um, and 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 through the world financial system. Of of uh, maintaining this highly unequal international division of labor, China essentially sees like a number of uh, critical technological sectors as as being uh, the linchpins for its own plan to to escape that trap, right? Um, and these include, for example, AI, uh, you know, just telecoms infrastructure in general, aerospace, um, green tech as well, where where you know. As I think is fairly widely known now, uh, China's investments uh, have far outstripped, you know, um, what we see in any other country. Essentially, to to uh, establish a position wherein, uh, you know, acknowledging the, the the overall logic of uh, of you know the global capitalist system, right, which neither China nor any other country, even if it you know, wants to, is in a frontal position to sort of overthrow its entirety at the moment. All of that is, is I think, one key component of the medium to longer term strategy. And as I mentioned before, you know, uh, another is, is to, to establish by means of the Belt and Road Initiative, um, the, the, you know, creation of, of, of essentially uh, a reliable, um, sort of trading ecosystem right. that is to the extent possible outside the dictates 
of you know uh, the very much Western dominated global trade regime, uh, world financial institutions like the IMF and the World Bank, um, and you know in addition to to the sort of uh, you know major infrastructural investments right. Uh, in in you know countries, for example, throughout uh, Central Asia, South Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, that that uh, are are most strongly associated with Belt and Road per se. Um, China as well, you know, I think plays a key role in terms of building up the uh, the technological level and the productive capacity of of countries that are specifically targeted again because of you know their their uh, their their geopolitical uh, independence from the United States uh, right. by U.S. sanctions regimes, right? Excellent. Including, for example, the DPRK, Cuba, Iran. Um, we can't forget, of course, that uh, the arrest of Huawei's CFO uh, Meng Wanzhou in in uh, Vancouver uh, was done, you know, very transparently at the behest of the United States, and that. The charges that were levied against her were for yeah, violation sure. of of U.S. sanctions against Iran, right? Um, and and so you know, again, these are all components of of a broader strategy that recognizes that um, China's own sort of uh, uh, capacity for for continued um, uh, uh, you know sort of self driven technological investment cannot rely entirely on. Uh, the building of a domestic market, though, though that is sort of the foundation, and in some ways, uh, it's 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 what you know companies like Huawei that are that are under you know uh, quite overt uh, assault by 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 the U.S. tech war have to fall back on. Um, but longer term, uh, this kind of global South South cooperation, uh, you know, is absolutely key to uh, to that sort of strategy as well. And yeah, as I said, uh, you know, that sort of broader geopolitical uh, strategy is, is inseparable from, uh, you know, the sort of more domestic focus that Made in China 2025 and all these initiatives uh, are, are often sort of perceived as having in the West uh, due to this conception of China as as sort of a rising and like hyper nationalist power, um, which which really you know what it amounts to is uh, a tremendous act of projection by Western commentators of uh, you know the the developmental model that was pursued by countries of the imperial core, which is quite nakedly uh, colonialist and imperialist, uh, and indeed you know was was shot through with with. The, the same kinds of, of, of uh, protectionism and indeed of you know theft of technology uh, and of wealth in general that that they are now accusing China of. Yeah,